that is just the worst feeling ever. Here's an exploded view of the Zenith carburetor. And I suppose by rights I should be down at the Boxing Day sales getting excited about cheap toasters and kettles. The Prefect D93A, which is this car of course. Well, welcome back to the channel and time to carry on with the Ford Prefect. Now, I think I left things, last time I left things, we were just cleaning up the carburetor down here. That's had a bit of a cursory cleanup. It's not immaculate by any means, but at least it's not grubby and covered in oil to handle, so that's nice and clean. So I thought while that's off, it would seem a good idea. Let me just fire this light up. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at the blowing exhaust. Now, down there is the joint for the exhaust downpipe to the manifold. So I've removed the cast bracket that was on there and it had clearly been blowing and it wasn't lining up very well so I've supported the exhaust on a trolley jack under there and I thought well while this is disconnected there's only four nuts actually hold the combined inlet and exhaust manifold onto the engine and looking at the the state of it it's all very dirty and hasn't been off for a long long time So, like I said, there's only four nuts hold that on, and as I've got a few gaskets over here, which I had stored in the little green van, that's the, that's one of the new old stock uh, manifold gaskets, so it makes sense to clean all that up and put that on while I'm addressing the blowing exhaust there, and while I've got the carburetor off, it just makes sense to tidy all this up. The head gasket, it looks like it's been apart in recent times, so I'm going to leave that um, and just see how we go. But this hasn't been touched in decades, literally. So it makes sense while I'm at it, on this side of the engine, we'll whiz the manifold off, clean all that up, clean up all the surfaces, put a new gasket in and put it back together. I think this one will fit, let's give that a go. So I'll just pop that on there. Yeah, that fits. So I'll just give that a... There we go. Hopefully it won't pull the stud out. Hopefully it's just the nut coming off. If the stud comes with it, it isn't the end of the world, but... I would prefer just the nut to come off. That's not too bad. It's a very chilly day today, quite foggy out there. I don't think the fog's going to clear at all. So. But for the time of year, whatever it is now, mid-December, I can't really complain too much. And the other advantage of being out in the garage is it means you're not watching the news on the telly, which is the last thing you want to be watching at the moment. This one's a little bit awkward. Let's get on that. Eee, it's a bit tight. I really don't want the stud to come off. What I really don't want is a stud to snap, because that would be very bad indeed, so I think I'll put the camera down and I'll just carefully finish this one off. I'll probably loosen it a bit, tighten it a bit, loosen it a bit, tighten it a bit and just make sure that there's every chance of the nut coming off and the stud remaining in the block. Touch wood, they seem to be coming out okay. There's no more, there's no more sinking feeling than when you're undoing a, a nut or a bolt that hasn't moved in a while and it snaps on you. That is just the worst feeling ever when you're tinkering on a car like this. But touch wood, these are all coming out okay. Like I say, these back to, I had to, well I didn't have to, but I sort of back, back them off a bit, sprayed some freeing up oil on them and then tightened them up again and just worked them, worked the threads a little bit just to get them to move as best as possible and give it the best chance there is of them not snapping the studs off because the studs aren't huge and it doesn't take much to snap off a stud i've been there before so i'm very keen to avoid that in some cases you can get a bit of heat on things and that really does help free up a nut or a bolt that hasn't moved in a long time but you don't really want to be waving heat around an inlet manifold that's had fuel in it recently so uh, the trick is not to rush anything at all That's 
seems to be coming out quite nicely so I'll just switch this off and free up my other hand and get that manifold off There's one slightly grimy manifold, exhaust manifold at the bottom and there is a joint there, it's the hot spot that's cool and this is the inlet manifold here as you can see that's not been off in quite a long time so I think that will clean up quite nicely we also check for any cracks as well on the, the manifold while it's off and we can clean up the, the face on the block and just make sure there's no leaks there any leaks on the induction side play havoc with the mixture of the engine running and if you've got a leak on an in, uh, inlet manifold gasket or on the inlet manifold or in the case of these in the pipe work that runs up to the vacuum wiper motor which relies on the engine vacuum to operate uh, it can really make the engine run badly so uh, while this is off I can make sure that that is all as it should be there we go there's the uh, all the manifolding off. I've just got the bit, the old gasket there, which can come off. Certainly won't be reusing that. Like I say, I've got loads of spare ones, so no need for cutting corners on that score. All the studs appear to be okay. Only four studs. But like I say, while it's while I was working on this side, it makes sense just to clean all this up, put a fresh gasket on, and at least. I then know that this bit is okay. I may also whip off this. This is the valve cover that I was talking about in the previous video where I was talking a little bit about side valve engines and I said that to work on the valves to adjust them certainly you have to remove the side cover off the side of the engine and there it is on this particular on the Ford engine the E93A engine there is the side cover and that is what you take off if you want to do any work on the valves. Um, so, yeah, obviously that's a cylinder head, you have to take that off if you want to remove the valves completely, but you can do a fair bit just through the side here. And, uh, I may take this off, I may not. I mean it sounded fairly quiet on the valve front, so sometimes it's best not to try and fix things that don't need repairing. Um, leave well alone. So I may, I may leave that, I'm not sure yet, but I certainly wanted to clean all this up and get a, get a good seal on the manifold side of things. I think that's probably the next thing to do. Clean all this gunge off here, scrape this back with a blade, a razor blade, something like that, nice and flat. Get all this nice and clean and then we'll have a look at cleaning the manifold up as well. And then it'll all be a nice clean thing to fit back together. This is the factory workshop manual that was actually issued in the 1950s and this covers all the 933 and the 1172 cc Ford engines and this is really the bible if you're working on one of these cars you can see a little bit of the engine layout there and there's the manifold like I say it can be split apart the inlet and the exhaust manifolds but I don't think I will need to do that but that just gives an idea of what they look like I'll probably have a look, quick look at the carburetor while I'm here actually and here's an exploded view of the Zenith carburetor so you can see the general layout. This is an adapter so that you can fit a proper air cleaner onto one of these but this isn't the standard fitting on as far as I know on the UK market cars. It may have been elsewhere but you can see the general layout of how the carburetor is. That's the main body and there's the float which operates the needle valve. So the fuel comes in here. You can see that. The fuel comes in here and the needle valve, if it's open, allows fuel to fill up the float chamber there. As the fuel rises in there, the float rises up and that little recess there pushes this little removable part on the needle valve and as that rises, the float, it shuts that off and then you don't get flooding. If the carburetor's flooding, like it was on the Anglia in one of the recent videos, chances are this has a leak if the float has a leak and it sits down in the bottom of the float chamber regardless of the level of the fuel then it's just going to keep pouring fuel in and then it'll just spill out everywhere so it relies on this not leaking as long as that's working and this is okay and there's no dirt in there then things should work as they're supposed to do 
down in the bottom in the previous video I removed the two jets that's that and that there they screw into the base of the float chamber in there so it's all it's all fairly simple like I say the fuel comes in that way fills up this goes through the emulsion block here and gets sprayed into there and that's where it mixes with the the air that gets drawn into the engine and because this is a downdraft carburetor the carburetor mounts there on those two studs there onto the manifold so the mixture goes down into the manifold and into the engine and that's basically all it is as i've said before this is the same engine that was fitted in the ford 103 e pop and some of the pre-war ford cars are ford tens of the 1930s so any work that you see here is pretty much the same as you'd be doing on a pop or an e83 w van so like i say i'm going to clean up these this face here where the new gasket will go this all needs to be cleaned because if there's any dirt that gets trapped behind the gasket you won't get an airtight seal so the first thing to do is go and find the little trusted little empire puncture repair kit box and in there i drop my razor blades from those have gone on the floor somewhere so i'll go and dig one of those up and i will start to clean this up and just get it all looking nice and nice and flush if with your Ford side valve engine you've ever wondered where the engine number is or where it should be then wonder no more because next to the distributor we have the engine number stamped into this top face of the cylinder block itself and if you look closely you'll see that at the beginning of that engine number we've got the letter R That signifies that this is a reconditioned engine, a factory reconditioned engine. It wasn't unusual for engines to be swapped out at 20, 30,000 miles back in the day because they weren't the most long lasting of engines. So it would be very unusual for a car of this age to still have its original engine. And uh, like most of these old Fords, this one has had one, maybe two even reconditioned engines during its lifetime. It's a very, very common thing to do, swap out an engine. You could obviously refurbish the engine that was in, but Ford offered a reconditioned engine scheme for many, many years where you just pay for a reconditioned engine. They take the one that's in out, put a new one in or reconditioned engine back in, and then they would refurbish the one they'd taken out and sell it on again to somebody else. And this one has definitely been through that particular process. Now another job to do while the manifolding is off is have a look at the fuel pump. There it is, we spoke about that in one of the previous videos, but you can see it and get at it a lot easier without all the carburetor and stuff in the way. And in here, I mean this is the this is the manual primer I was talking about. You pump that up and down and that pulls the fuel up from the tank into here without having to spin the engine over. And it goes up this pipe here and into the carburetor, which is normally around here. Now and under this lid there is a little gauze, a filter, so again, while things are nice and easy to get at, we will reach for our super slim spanner, I don't think. there we go, we'll whiz that top off, because I don't know when this was last off, it looks fairly grubby, so it probably hasn't been touched in a little while, the car's been off the road since the, well, the beginning of the 1970s at the the earliest it could well be it hasn't been used for some time before that so we'll carefully take that off without dropping it and the little lid should come off there we go so there's the lid we'll put that somewhere safe so there's only a slight chance of losing it and then this is a brass gauze in here we just need to try and get that out of there without damaging it see if we can get that There we go. That's the little brass gauze. And as you can see, you can actually see through that one quite well, so that's not too bad at all. But there is a little bit of gunge inside there. Probably can't quite see on the camera, but there is a little bit of sludgy stuff in there. So while that's off, we'll give that a quick blow through. We'll clear out the worst of the sludge in there and put it back together. Because I know this pump works because the engine runs, so really this is just a service of the pump. It doesn't actually need an overhaul at the moment. If it does in future, well, it's easy enough to get at, but for the time being, we'll just service it by cleaning up this gauze and cleaning out some of the guns that's in there that's built up over the last God knows how many decades. Okay, well, the manifold's in the vice now. I'm literally just going to start cleaning it all up. You can see behind here, which is, this is the underside of the manifold. You can see how much fuel has been leaking there and there. It's quite a build-up 
of old fuel sticky yucky gloopy stuff so I think there's been quite a few leaks around here for quite some time so it's uh, not before time that we start cleaning this up so we'll literally use a straight edge i.e. this razor blade you can get single sided razor blades that have got a slightly more comfortable bit to grip there but they still do the job and really we'll just get this so it's nice and flat I'll just clean this up a little bit. I'm not going to paint the manifold because high temperature paint never seems to last very well when I've tried it. So we'll just literally clean it up. We can go back on. I believe there is like a little groove here, which is there for a reason. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, but someone did mention that that's important and it's part of it. There's one there and there's one here as well. So I'll make sure that these are clean. This is where the razor blade comes in really handy. So as part of cleaning up this face, which goes against obviously the manifold gasket and onto the, the side of the engine, we'll make sure that these are nice and clear as well. I'll just crack on with that. And the smoother this is, this, this mating surface here, the better the joint will be when it comes to putting it all back together. What I will do is, after I finish cleaning this up, I will put a straight edge across here just to make sure that it is perfectly flat. Um, sometimes things can distort over time, and if you haven't, if there's any distortion across here, then you're never going to get a very good gas tight seal. So you can use a metal rule, something like that, just to lay it across and just make sure there are no gaps underneath. You can't see daylight when you run. You put the rule against here. The worst thing about this time of year is just how damp everything gets. Outside things get wet, even things that are covered up, the covers don't really work very well at all. Um, and even in here you get dampness, it seems to get a bit damp on the floor. It's airborne moisture, it's not leaking in very much, there's the odd leak but nothing too much. But what I try and do is, it's a blowy day today but it has stopped raining so I try and open up this bottom garage, open up this door and also the two main doors and it just gets a good breeze through and as long as you remember to close the doors by the evening or if it starts raining it will just air everything and just dry things off a little bit which is a really important thing to do you might have a garage that's bone dry dehumidified and perfect and that's all well and good but this garage is far from that so when it's a damp and horrible day I try and leave the doors open for as much possible time just to air things like I say and it just it just helps preserve things a little bit better it gets air around everything there's tools as well it's not just the cars that get a little bit damp it's tools signs books all sorts of things that don't really want to be getting damp or staying damp for any length of time so open up the doors really does help that out so right let's come put the kettle on Right, okay, well it's an hour or so later, the manifold is now cleaned up. It's not immaculate, but at least it's clean to handle now, so that's the main thing. That's where the carburetor bolts on, so that's all nice and cleaned up. And that's where it bolts onto the side of the block, and that's all nice and cleaned up. So at least it's a lot more pleasant to handle than it was before. I guess you can just about see that. Also cleaned up. The brackets, these are the cast iron brackets that clamp the exhaust onto the bottom of the manifold. They're not brilliant, but they will do the job. For the purposes of just getting the car into something like roadworthy condition, um, the exhaust will do for now. At some point it may need replacing, obviously. But for the purposes of testing, it'll do the job just fine, as will these old clamps, which have actually cleaned up quite well. But anyway, it's getting jolly chilly now. So it's uh, the temperature's dropping right off. So I think I think we'll call it a day. Now this is where the exhaust downpipe fits onto the manifold, and if you look closely, I'm not sure how well the light and the camera's going to pick this up, but there are quite a few nibbles and burnt away parts on that face, which, if push comes to shove, it can be used. But if I can find a better manifold, I think I probably will do. Now, lurking down here, just out of sight, buried away in the darker corners of the garage, 
is a spare 1172 cc engine that's been here a few years and i've noticed that at the back there is a manifold on it so next job i'm going to pull this engine out which i believe is quite a good engine actually i'm going to pull that out and have a look at that manifold and just see if it's in slightly better condition than the one that's off the prefect if it is i'll fit that one instead I've been meaning to actually put this jerry can inside Big Dodge for a long time. It's in a, an original holder and it's actually a war department jerry can dated 1945. So as the truck is from 1940, this wartime, late wartime era jerry can would just be perfect in the back of that. So I really need to crack on. Pop that inside the big truck. But for now we can go there. Right, here's the engine. So I need to drag this out and just see what the condition of this manifold is like. It may be no better than the one I've got. Maybe I'm worrying too much over nothing really. But if it is better, it seems to have to leave it on there when it can go on the, on the working car. Vauxhall Bedford hydraulic oil. BP Visco static. Yeah, the manifold actually looks quite oily and there is a much better clamp on it so I think given like I say it's only held on with uh, four nuts on four studs I think we'll whiz that off and then just have a quick compare and just see which is the better of the two manifolds to use and we'll go with that. Oh, joy of joy <coughs> this is the original prefect manifold not the Ford script <coughs> and this is the replacement of the spare engine down there this is the union or the fitting rather for the vacuum wiper takeoff obviously it fits the prefect manifold perfectly screws in there spot on but when you try and do it on this one it's a different size altogether it's a slightly smaller diameter hole obviously this <coughs> Ain't gonna work. So I've got two options. I can stick with the original manifold, which is okay but not perfect, or try and separate the two halves of the manifold. Now I can see that these haven't been out in a very long time and at the very least they're going to need a fair bit of heat on them to release them in fact if i look at this the the spare manifold here someone has already had a go at this one and has already snapped one of the threads off so i think for the sake of simplicity and the fact that they are quite easy to change I'm going to stick with plan A and keep the original manifold I think and just like I say the objective is to get the car running and roadworthy it doesn't you know if I have to swap this over at some point in future it's not a big job I've got plenty of gaskets it's only held on with four nuts and a few little fittings on the car breath and Bob's your uncle so I'll put this one back in the spares pile for now and I have got a couple of other manifolds kicking around somewhere so I will go and dig those out and just see if I could press one of those into service without having to strip this down here um, but if they're no better I'll probably actually just stick with the original I think I've just had a quick look at the original manifold just to make sure there's nothing majorly warped and this is the closest I've got to a straight edge this old metal rule and it all appears to look fine the camera won't pick it up but there's no obvious gaps of air underneath the ruler which would suggest that something may be slightly distorted along here but it's not so i think that should be good to go back on the car that's this evening's little job done anyway the carburetor's back on manifolds back on chokes reconnected throttles reconnected uh, I yep fuel line in is reconnected I just need to find a length of hose to replace the hose that was on the takeoff for the vacuum wiper there which goes on to this thing on the bulkhead there and then we can move on to refitting the exhaust clamps and hopefully trying to get a decent seal on the exhaust down there
I've still got the jack underneath so I can lift up the downpipe gently on the jack and get it all lined up and under some compression before I put the, the bracket on and then hopefully with a tiny smidge of exhaust sealant it will actually seal up okay so that'll probably be the next job to do okay well, welcome back now it is actually boxing day today i hope everyone had a reasonable christmas it was good as can be expected given everything that's going on um and i suppose by rights i should be down at the boxing day sales getting excited about cheap toasters and kettles but what i did get excited about the other day on christmas eve to be exact are a couple of additions to the classic car bulbs collection and here We've got a fully stocked box of double light. It uh, gives double the lights for half the current consumption. Auto bulbs. And it says 12 volt, 3 CP, uh, foreign, 1 dozen. But does anyone know anything about double light bulbs? I mean, the box looks like it's probably what, 1930s, 1940s possibly, but probably not much newer than that. But I've never heard of double light bulbs. There are quite a few bulbs up there probably a little bit dark to see but there are quite a few bulbs up there but I've not come across double light before so that's quite exciting and on the same stall was another fully stocked box of Lucas MES bulbs these are all really tiny bulbs it's a full set in there never been used presumably out an old garage or possibly even a bike shop I do wonder if these little bulbs were used on bicycles perhaps if you know anything about your classic bulbs you could let me know in the comment section but they'll those two boxes will be added to the collection that's quite exciting but today the plan is to get back on to the prefect it's still raining outside it's been, it feels like it's been raining forever and yes the, as I think I talked about in the last video the idea next is to reconnect down there, the exhaust to the downpipe. Now it's not really something I could film because it's so dark and gloomy and fiddly down there. So I think I'll probably switch it off, get on with the exhaust and I'll be back once that's been done. And then really we just need to connect up the vacuum pipe for the wiper motor and then we'll run it up and just see if it's cured the blowing exhaust that it was suffering from before. Now like I said in the uh, early in this video I had a look at the manifold that came with the spare engine that I've got here which I've had for a few years. Unfortunately I wasn't able to use that but apparently this is meant to be a good engine. This is an 1172 so it's exactly the same as in the Ford van and the Ford Prefect. Now supposedly it's had work done to it but I'm not quite sure what and when I had a look at it the other day when I was getting the manifold off I noticed that the engine is actually stuck so I thought it'd be quite useful to persuade my youthful assistant to remove the cylinder head and we can just have a look and just see what it's like inside the engine because I've not had a proper look um, it's quite a simple thing just to take the head off and have a look just see what the pistons the cylinders and also the valves are like because maybe there is something stuck somewhere and really, to get the cylinder head off, all you have are a series of nuts along here. And the distributor is also holding it in as well. I mean, technically, the, this would come out with the head. Um, but I think we'll just take the dizzy off first, and it just makes life a little bit easier. Like I said, the manifold's already off, which bolts on there. So the first thing we're going to do is whiz this off. This should actually be held in with a little screw. But someone's put a bolt in there, so we'll have to take that off and probably find a proper screw. But yeah, the first thing is we'll take the dizzy off and then we'll start loosening off the nuts that hold the cylinder head on. And with the head off, we can have a look and just check the bores and the valves. I think it is coming slowly, isn't it? It's just a bit awkward. Like I say, it should be a dome-headed screw, that. I think it's a proper Ford cap actually, yeah, see, Ford, so that's all ready and off, that turns quite freely, you can see the peg in there is offset, so you can really only fit it one way, so that's come off quite well. We've removed the plugs, they were only finger tight, and they're not the correct plugs anyway, and these are some long reach plugs, it shouldn't have those, it should have Champion L10s, but they've just been put in just to stop muck being dropped down the bore, so that was a good idea, so I'll pop those there, so next thing to do, is to whiz off these cylinder head nuts. Now, what we'll do is we'll loose them all a bit at a time. We'll find the right socket and we'll loosen them all just a little bit and just work our way around so there's less chance of warping the cylinder head, yeah? So, go and find uh, some old sockets and we'll see which one the cylinder head needs. You'll have to have a... <laughs> 
There's a whole box of them down there. See that big blue box down there? You'll have to have a ferret around in there and just pick out a few that look like they might be close and then you can... Let's have a look at what the size is. Yeah, okay. Well, you do that. I'll leave you to get on with that and I'll just go and find the exhaust paste for the prefect, okay? This one looks as though it might work. Alright, okay. 916th, that's brittle. Alright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. Is that a good fit? Yep, yeah, good. Right, we've got the socket out already. So what we're going to do is turn them about half a turn each. They're going to be tight to begin with, obviously, because they've been torqued down. But if you do, if you start, the idea is to sort of go across ways, right? Especially when you're tightening up. But what you want to try and do is they, they can distort if you go two berserk, just loosening one. If you loosen that one off fully, and then this one off fully, and then this one off fully you've got a risk of distorting, even though it's cast iron you can distort things, so the trick is probably start at the outside, those four, and then sort of work your way in and do like about a quarter of a turn, something like that Yeah, I do that when I'm doing carburetors Yeah, yeah, when you're putting the top back down on the carburetor yeah. So see if that's it, okay, so just do it a bit, that's it, just enough to slacken it and then sort of work diagonally, maybe go over to okay. this one here and just sort of do it diagonally, again, just sort of quarter turn, just to slacken it off They should all be the same tightness because they get torqued down with a torque spanner okay i'll do and then maybe go over to this one over here and then just work your way inwards going sort of diagonally okay quite straight there, there we go. go that's it that's, that's it just right a, and then back yeah. over here you've got oh, you've got some over here that one. yeah if you do that one i mean you wouldn't think that you could distort a cylinder head but it is possible and then, yeah, you can do that one. Basically, it's just not working all from one end to the other end. It's sort of sp it's spreading it out a bit. So you're sort of trying to loosen it evenly, uniformly, if you like. I'll do. That's enough. And then come over and do. So, it'll be, like I say, I've not had a look inside this engine. I've had it a few years, but it'd be quite interesting just to see. It'll be interesting to see just what it's like inside, then I'll know if it's a good spare or if it's a spare that's going to need a load of work. I have got some of the head gaskets somewhere, so that's not an issue. Right, so you got all the nuts off. This is just the that's just the dynamo bracket, so you can take that off and put that in the, in the box of goodies down there. You can pop that in there. So in theory, the head should come off now. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit of a tap with a wooden hammer or a piece of wood. But that should, if you just wiggle it and lift it up straight, that should come off and it'll reveal what state the engine's like inside okay so put that somewhere safe because obviously you don't want to damage the the surface of that put it on the on that old bit of cloth over there on the step <laughs> that's it all right so let's have a quick look in here then so the cylinder head gasket looks fairly new and in fact the valves they don't look coked up at all do they that's a bit of bit of corrosion mm -hmm. just a flaky bit of rust but actually that doesn't look too bad in there. The bores, Smooth. you're looking, if you run your fingers up the bores, you're looking for a lip at the top up here. There's a very slight lip there, but it, supposedly it's a good engine. It's, and all the valves look like they've been done, they're not coked up at all. So what we'll do is we'll get a crowbar and put it in here this is where the starter handle normally goes into here and you've got like a dog on here and it just we can get a bar and put that in there and just see if we can get the engine to turn but it actually looks very clean in there there's no corrosion so I'm really pleased with that that's probably a good running engine assuming these valves are okay which they look like I said not coked up so it looks like it's had a valve job at some point new head gasket well, it's probably run a little bit. There's a tiny little bit of a lip at the top of that cylinder there. It's very little. There's nothing on there. Nothing there. And nothing on there. So on the face of it, that looks quite good. So we'll go and find a bar to put on there. And we'll spray some WD-40 or something down the bores. Maybe a bit of diesel, actually. Just down the bores and all over the valves. 
because sometimes the valves stick in the guides here and then we'll just have a go and see if we can get the engine to turn over while we're at it we'll have a quick look at the head itself and this all looks really clean someone's decoked all this because this could all be crudded up and horrible but it's actually really clean in there it's not been polished up but it's all nice and clean there's no corrosion in here at all so that just wants a very basic clean and that can go back on once we've got the engine turning over again we'll probably put a new gasket on I mean you could reuse this gasket um, but I might put another one on but yeah we'll go and find some diesel and while we're having a bite to eat for lunch we'll just let the diesel soak down down the pistons down the valves and then we'll give it a go later with the bar on there and just see if it'll actually turn over or not now this old tin here has the tiny drop of diesel in it as you can see it's a fairly old tin in its own right probably 50s 60s but there's just here and there there's a little bit of diesel so I'm going to pour a drop of that down each cylinder just to make sure the rings are lubricated when we try and turn the engine over and I'll also dribble some over the valves in the hope that some of it will go down the valve guides and just lubricate them a little bit before we try to see if it'll actually turn over or not we could I suppose put a battery on the starter motor but I think for the first gentle try we'll just put a bar on here and it's a bit less it's a bit less brutal than trying to spin the engine over at full chat from the very beginning so I think that's probably the thing to do well there we go a bit of diesel in each bore you might remember if you've been watching the channel for a while I did a similar job when I was freeing up and getting the old Talbot to run I poured a bit of this down and just let it percolate through same with the valves um, there we go still a little drop left in there doesn't need much but that can just be carefully working its way down diesel is one of the best releasing agents you can have really uh, it's probably the best use for it to be honest so we'll li leave that to its own devices we'll come back to that a little bit later as i've already mentioned the proper factory workshop manual is a very handy thing to have as is if available a factory parts list because if you're working on any old car especially one that's been worked on before or possibly in partly dismantled you want to know how these things go back together and the parts list with illustrations will do just that unfortunately ford produced this back in the day and i believe you can buy copies of it and this covers pretty much all the upright fords it doesn't cover the 100e but it covers the upright fords from model y through to the 103 pop and the vans and so on if we have a look here we've got the ford model y the pop the original popular the model c and the cx the 8 the 7y8 the 7w10 10 horsepower the anglia eo4a is over there the prefect d93a which is this car of course got the angle e494a which is the gray car there's the later prefect with the revised front end and the headlights set into the wings as opposed to separate like that and there's the 103 pop which was the last of the upright fords then we've got the 500 weight van the e04c and the e494c the e83w van of course i did a video about the green one earlier in the year and there's the estate car version and there's the pickup and it's one of those that started me off with sidewall fords back in 1989 but like i say these factory parts lists are invaluable if you need to try and understand how the cars go together so half of it roughly is illustrations showing how all the body panels fit together with the relevant part numbers there's the carburetor of course which we looked at in the workshop manual before and these are so handy and then here we've got all the different part numbers for all the different pieces so if you find something that's an auto jumble with a part number on it you can use one of these books as a reference to see if it'll actually fit your car or van and these combined with a workshop manual make life a whole lot easier so if you're working on any old car especially one that sort of dates in you know essentially to the pre-war years if you can find an illustrated parts list as well as the factory workshop manual it'll go a long way in making life a whole lot easier so i'd certainly recommend having a look for one of these i think the ford side valve club are even reprinting these they certainly used to many years ago and they probably still do and while the diesel's doing its job in the other engine i've come back to the prefect and i've just reconnected the exhaust down there use some of this uh, repair putty just to seal it a little bit it's not the best joint in the world but it should do for now so i think the thing now 
is to start the engine up just from briefly just to get some a slight bit of warmth through the manifold that will help the exhaust putty cure um, and I've blocked off the outlet on the manifold there for the wiper motor just for now uh, and then once the I've had it running and then the exhaust stuff can go off I'll then attend to this pipe properly but let's see if it'll actually start so we're going to prime up the fuel on the little lever here so this pumps up the fuel from the tank bearing in mind it hasn't run since the carburetor has been off so I don't even know if it'll start now but I'm not entirely sure shouldn't normally need to do that much let's just see if it'll go anyway I'll have to reconnect the battery of course Too many signs of life there, but I'm not entirely sure the fuel's come up yet. Well, there doesn't seem to be too much going on there, so I think I'll just whiz off the float chamber on the carburetor and just see if there's any fuel in there or not. Nope, it's bone dry in there. There's no fuel in there. I mean, it could be that it's out of fuel, um, but I'm just going to try pumping the fuel up again by hand and just see if we can actually get some coming up. Um, if there isn't, then maybe there's a blockage, or maybe it's simply out of fuel. I don't know how much fuel was in there. It wasn't very much, and what was in there it stank really badly. But clearly, whatever's going on, there's nothing getting into that float chamber and nothing getting into the engine. It could be that the needle valve sticking a bit as well, so I'll just give that a bit of a check. And that's obviously what that presses on to. Um, the valve could stick, so I'll give that a bit of a check and I'll try and just see if we can get some fuel up, if indeed there's enough fuel in the tank to even get up here in the first place. Well, there's nothing pumping up from the tank on the hand priming lever, so I can only assume that it's, it's out of fuel. So just to for the purposes of getting the exhaust warm to cure the exhaust putty I'm just going to put some fuel straight in here, pop this back on and then it should fire up on that just that small amount of fuel that's in there and that should just be enough just to get a little bit of warmth through things just to help things cure The answer to that one is no that's oh, so I gave the uh, points a quick clean up so I'm just going to put a quick squirt of jungle juice straight into the carb just to see if it'll cough up into life in that and if it does then there's not much wrong really. Well, I think we'll put another drop in straight into the float chamber, I think. It doesn't seem too keen to play, but I think for now, because I'm really not sure about the fuel supply to this, so I think the probably next job to do is drain the tank, get some fresh fuel in the tank, make sure the fuel's coming up through, and then we'll just have another look at the carb and just make sure that everything's working as it should be. It should be okay, but clearly it's not very keen on playing at the moment. I think the battery's on its knees now, so that's probably game over for today. I'll go and put the battery on charge and we'll have a proper play tomorrow. Um, I think, yeah, like I said before, I think we'll make sure there's no old fuel left in the tank. Put fresh in, make sure it's pulling the fuel through by hand properly up to the carburetor. And only then we'll have another look at the spark, because I suspect the points might need a proper clean. I gave them a quick clean in situ, but they probably need doing again. So I think that'll probably do this particular video um, the spare engine I've left the diesel inside that and that can sort of pickle away to itself and hopefully uh, that diesel will find its way around the rings and around the valves and so on and then we can try it with a bar on the front just to see if the engine will turn over at all in other news the, uh, the Volvo 164 has gone on to a new home 
the Model AA went a little while ago, but the Volvo was collected fairly recently, and that's gone to a collector of 164, so that's gone in good hands. Um, like I said before, the idea this year was to try and sort of simplify things a little bit and not have quite so many different vehicles dotted around all needing work, and that's kind of behind the decision to let those two go. So anyway, uh, I'll wrap this one up. Thanks very much for watching. If you've not checked out some of the other videos on the channel, including videos on this Prefect and the Little Anglia here, please check those out as well. Uh, give the video a like if you're able. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That'd be great. And uh, more videos along very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Actually, I decided that before packing up for the day, I'd try and drain off the old fuel that's in the tank because I put the starting handle in and you could see there's actually a fair bit of fuel showing when I drew it out again. Now the drain plug, I had a look at that on the bottom of the tank and there was no way that was coming off. It was all rounded up and chewed. Some of them had been there years before. So I had to rig up a bit of a siphon system. I did this clear section here, which you'll recognise from the vacuum wiper motor connection at the front. I used that just so I could see when the fuel was coming up so I didn't end up drinking any of it and that seemed to work quite well. So this is all just draining out now. As you can see, there's a fair bit of mucky old fuel in there. It smells pretty bad. So that's better off out of the tank and then it can have fresh fuel in once this is finished. And that seems to be working quite well actually. Well just as a quick postscript, I finished draining off the majority of the old fuel and I added two gallons of fresh fuel obviously in there but it doesn't appear to be pumping through. Now I've I put the airline, the old trusty airline, I put that on this end of the fuel pipe, which is down here. You can just about see it there. My light's packed up, I'm afraid. So I put it on there and blew through and hardly hardly had a listen to the other end. So you could hear the bubbling fuel at the other end. So that tells me that the fuel pipe is clear. But no matter what I do, whether I spin the engine over with another battery on or do it by hand, the pump. No fuel is pumping through here. I've disconnected the fuel pipe that goes into the carburetor there. So I've disconnected that and there's no fuel coming through at all, despite spinning it over on the starter, doing it by hand. I know there's two gallons of fuel in the tank and I know that the line is clear. So either there's a blockage in the fuel pump somewhere or it's just packed up and it needs an overhaul. So I think it'll have to come off so that'll probably be the next job to do and that will be in the next video all being well